I visited the industrial member of the consortium in Barcelona. They specialize in selling gas sensors. Mark Delgado, sensor trans chairman, was a little skeptical about nanotube devices when he was first approached. What was your impression, though, of the nanostructures on nanotube? How did it sound? Uh, it, first of all, it sounds me like uh, science fiction. You know that uh, I never heard uh, anything about uh, nanotechnology or nanotubes or nanocarbons or nano things. And uh, I was impressed on how small can we control the, the things. I like the atmosphere. It's a small company run by a father, a son and a daughter. We are a family company. Uh, uh, we began, or Joachim, my father, began in the 60s. And uh, Nuria is the, the account manager. Myself, I take care of the commercial mainly and direction of the company. Can you tell me why that decision? Why benzene? Well, in the beginning, um, we talk about different gases, and uh, with Edward, we both we agree that uh, there are uh, a not covered uh, solution for benzene measuring, uh, mainly in in refineries and in petrochemical industry, but also on petrol stations. Okay, and is benzene dangerous? Yes, uh, benzene is a cancerogen uh, for humans. Every year reducing the toxicity level. Uh, five or seven years ago, it was at uh, 10 ppm. PPM that, is parts per million. Five ppm. Now we have, uh, depending on the country, uh, one or 0.5 ppm, and it's going down. So uh, every day we need more sensitive instruments to detect benzene because requirements are changing. What we actually have as a benzene detector, um, you can see that the, the size is, uh, well, really is what is it. Uh, this is perhaps the best benzene detector on the market today. The filter is to remove other gases and only let benzene pass. That goes into the inlet tube. It's not all that sensitive. Air has to be sucked in for 60 seconds to collect enough benzene to give a measurement. I asked Mark to tell me where I would run into benzene. Petrol, uh, you have between 2% uh, to 4% uh, of uh, benzene concentration. It's part of the, uh, the crude, and on the refinery they extract a part, but they need still some, some part of benzene to make the, the mixture um, useful for gas or whatever. We measured the benzene levels as we filled up. Mark explained that as the petrol That's goes in, good. it pushes the vapour that filled our empty tank out around us. Always uh, smelling when we are refueling our cars. Yes. This is only a, f a part of benzene. It's not, it's not all benzene. There are lots of other things. 0.2 ppm benzene. Oh, right. okay. 0.2 ppm benzene. Mark said that this was a serious exposure if you lived in it, but isn't important if you perhaps are transiently in it for a few minutes a week. On the industry, uh, the danger is um, primarily in refineries. On a turnaround on a refinery, you could have uh, 3,000 or 5,000 men working uh, inside this refinery. And they are not very expertise on these jobs. They uh, are very low-skilled people. And uh, the danger is that these guys can be damaged for the, uh, these emissions. These kinds of detectors, it's around uh, 5,000 5, euros. This is my personal target for the detector, the benzene detector, that uh, we want to have in two years and a half. What kind of price? Which is my guess. Mm. I would like to have a complete detector 
for less than 250 euros. And if it was available at that, what do you guess the market would be worldwide? A uh, thousand refineries worldwide. If you multiply by, let's say, a hundred uh, units per refinery, uh, it would be a huge number of workers protected. If these sensors become cheap and accurate and available, yeah. what kind of situations would they be used in? We can put these uh, detectors, maybe fixed detectors, on petrol stations, for example. 40,000 petrol stations in Europe, which is, uh, which is good. Uh, maybe a little bit more uh, of this. Uh, I have to make the market study, but uh, around that.